You are listening to the EdTech Takeout from Grantwood AEA, an educational service agency that supports school districts in eastern Iowa with a focus on equity, excellence, and efficiency in education for all children. Welcome to episode 39 of the EdTech Takeout, the podcast that serves up bite-sized technology tips for teachers. My name is Mindy Kearney, and I'm with the one and only Jonathan Wiley. What a great introduction, Mindy. (laughs) I was ready to get started. I know. I see that. You're just (laughs) chomping at the bit here. (laughs) Happy Monday morning. Uh, Monday morning. Yay. It's raining and like freezing outside. Yes, it is. Yeah. I think that means, I think that means spring is coming. I think so too. Better rain than like snow and ice and stuff like that. I just said it was icing outside. It's icy. It's supposed to get icy yet. You didn't ever listen to me ever. (laughs) I thought you said it was raining outside. (laughs) It is rainy, but it's supposed to get icy. Okay. I'll just edit out that part and pretend I was listening the whole time. That's nice. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Should we get started? We probably should um, use and follow up. up. Oh, jinx. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, we have to make a big announcement again about Padlet today. You said you got an awesome email from Padlet about all their new updates. Yeah. What's going on? Um, Seven new ways to post on Padlet, although I don't think they're all necessarily new, new, but they're new to some devices, I think. Um, So number one is draw, where you can doodle away on your Mm -hmm. on-screen canvas. Um, Voice is the second one, where you can record an unlimited amount of audio. Oh, you know how I feel about unlimited amount of audio. That's asking for trouble, isn't it? It is kind of. Uh, But you can pause and resume and use headphones and external microphones as well. We are a new hosting site. It could be. Yeah. You could podcast on Padlet. We could. All of our episodes could be all... On, on one, padlet? one Padlet board? I don't know. That's kind of interesting. It is. Um, ideas for the classroom. Uh, mm-hmm. Film is another one where you can record videos, HD capture, external webcam support, and again, pause and resume. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. record your vlogs, etc. Yeah. And uh, Snap is the next one where you can take photos. High quality capture, again, using your webcam. Yep. Interesting one here is Google where you can search for images, YouTube videos, GIFs, and websites. Excited about adding GIFs. Everyone's Padlet everywhere will have a GIF from me. Yes, if you give Mindy access to your Padlet, I think GIFs are going to be on there for sure. Absolutely. I'm super excited about that. Safe search is on by default, though, so don't worry too much about that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Jeez. Maps also available. You can add places, search any place in the world using uh, maps and... uh, Choose from four different styles to have those on there. Nice. And the last thing on here, which is kind of meta, is you can put a Padlet inside a Padlet. Yes. Yes. Padlet inside a Padlet. I know. And in that Padlet, you could have more Padlets. Yeah, like nesting Russian yes. dolls. Absolutely. Uh huh. It's the Padlet that never ends. Tell me about what. Amber did with oh, Padlet yeah. when you guys were out the other day? Yeah, so um, Amber and I last Friday did um, an invention literacy session. And we, and this is totally Amber's idea, so I'm not going to take any credit for it. Um, but we used it to present from. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, instead of creating a slide deck, and I think. I don't know, like as a team, but I'm trying to kind of get away from slide decks a little bit more and doing more like, uh, I don't know if you call it like a hyper doc, you know, with just a doc with like resources and things like that. Well, she decided to use a Padlet, um, which the only issue that we ran into, and I didn't, and she fixed it right away, so I didn't even see it as an issue, but um, we had talking points and she had that as just text. Mm -hmm. But when you click on it, it doesn't like expand when you use just text. Oh, okay. So she um, used Canva and made those talking points into like into a little... Image. Mm-hmm. Okay. That and it looked sense. really nice when she clicked on it. You know, it just popped up on the screen and all the resources were there. And Cool. Yeah. I saw that tweet nice from idea. you the other day yeah. and I thought, hey, I wonder what they're doing with that. But yeah. that sounds interesting. Yeah. All right. So um, more news I have here. I, yeah. I heard the other day that uh, this won't affect everybody, but it will affect some people. Twitter mm-hmm. for Mac is now dead yeah uh twitter have said they are removing it from the app store and it will no longer get any future updates right the mac app store the mac app store yes Uh, the ios one is still fine right now but Mm -hmm. uh, they say if you're a mac user they recommend you use the website yeah 
Which, so there, which, take that. Yeah, I, I'm not a big. Do you use the website? I do use the website. I'm not a big fan of the website. I'll yeah. I'll use things like uh, TweetDeck instead. Yeah, sure. But um, TweetBot or Twitterific also could be good for the Mac. Yeah. All right. So um, another news and follow up. Our last one, CoSpaces. Um, and I think we talked about this earlier, but CoSpaces was originally CoSpaces Maker. And now they also have CoSpaces EDU, which that's a little bit old news, but um, the CoSpaces EDU was a paid account before, and then they changed it again so that you can have a free account for CoSpaces EDU. Um, and I just looked this, the kind of the stats up on the free account. You can have one class in CoSpaces, um, and in that class, 30 students, but they've added now collaborative spaces. So um, when I first started using CoSpaces, one of the ways we used it was that everybody logged on with the teacher account and then all of the kids could kind of be in and collaborating in each other's worlds. And then they took that option away. Yeah. Um, so now they've added that back in with two collaborative spaces with the EDU account. If you were to pay and go pro, it's a yearly subscription um, and then you, I think you have unlimited collaborative spaces, but they've also added coding activities to CoSpaces. Hmm. So, um, not just the built-in coding within the creation part of it. Yeah. Um, but also it's, it's more like a CoSpaces, um, space already. And then you go in and kind of complete the tasks that the game requires you to do by using code. So I think it's nice that, you know, just the, the free account gives you... 30 free student yeah. accounts, yeah. accounts and two collaborative spaces. That's quite yeah. a lot just to dip so. in as a teacher and try something out Definitely. and see if that works, especially if you're like an ele elementary teacher because that will take care of your whole class. It will, <laughs> yeah, right. And let them all get, dig in and see what it's like there. And if you want to go pro, then uh, you certainly have a good experience uh, trying that out. Yeah. Love co-spaces. Yeah. I think the graphics have gotten better. I showed them to I you know. today and you we're were We're watching that video too, right? with the pirate walking around and yeah. the shark. It's and very real life. It's becoming much more uh, yeah. animated and yeah. exciting. It's, it's constantly evolving. That's another one that I always kind of keep your eye on. It's always changing. So, Next up, main course. Let's do it. Main course served to piping hot. Do you want to build a podcast? Are you going to sing that for us? Is that why you called it that? I That's why I called the... it that. <laughs> I didn't even see the name of the title. We until, were in a kind like, of a right wintry now. season, yeah. and I thought, hey, that might be fun. <laughs> oh, we need to bring singing back to this podcast. It's been a while. I, I thought we got enough emails that said, don't do that <laughs> Please anymore. Please stop doing yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So over the past couple months, we've actually had people kind of asking us about how we got started, how they could get started, um, just kind of asking for some advice about podcasting. And so we thought, hey, well, maybe there are other people out there that want to know too. So we decided to do just a little um, snippet about how we kind of got started, right? Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to say, I guess, that this is probably one of the highest compliments we could have that people are coming to us for advice on how to build a podcast. Or they just want to put but, something better out there. Yeah. Like, geez, if they can do it, so can we. I know. I was, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm sorry if we misled you and made you think we knew what we were doing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, right. 39 episodes later, we, uh, you know, we, we learned a little bit along the way, but we're yeah. still making mistakes like oh. anybody else. We made a mistake this morning. Yeah. Well, we you to, say we, you mean you. Okay. I made a mistake this morning and we started recording and then we were talking away and then I looked down and realized we weren't recording anymore. So. Yeah. Had to re-record. Yeah. However, perhaps there are some things that we could uh, help people out because um, I think almost this is podcasting, and this is going to sound really strange because of how long podcasting has been around, but I think mm. podcasting is the new blogging in some ways yeah. because, you know, for a while there, lots of teachers were making blogs and sharing things on blogs. Yeah. And I, I see more and more teachers now setting up podcasts and yeah. thinking, hey, I could just talk this and, mm -hmm. sure. and do something in a different medium. Yeah, I agree. So, um, kind of, I, I'm thinking back to like when you, I think we were sitting at a team meeting and you're like, so I want to build a podcast Yeah, and everyone's like, oh. everyone <laughs> like looked at their crickets. shoes except for Mindy. It was, like, oh, I'll do that. Mindy's like, I'm in. <laughs> I know. What was I thinking? Um, yeah. So 
yeah it was it was a it was a, a way that we thought we could try and you know offer ideas and right. things of of what we do and face to face but do that virtually and on demand yeah and i think we've mentioned this before but our teachers are getting it's getting harder and harder for them to get out of their buildings yeah um they're just you know we have kind of a sub shortage um, in Iowa, and we're just trying to think of ways that we could reach all of our teachers out there that um, would be you know accessible to them. So here it is. Yep. So that's one way that we um, put that out there. I mean, everybody needs a reason for for doing a podcast. I think though, I think that's right. what we're getting at here. Right. And that if you're going to want to put a podcast out, what what are you hoping to you know achieve what kind of audience are you looking to mm-hmm. reach what kind of uh, space do you want to fill um because i think the best podcasts out there all have some kind of niche or target right. that they're they're aiming to to get at right and then you have to come up with the title right yeah i think that was one of our first steps wasn't it oh jeez and i remember like even after we figured out the title of it jason was still like i i still don't really like that title <laughs> do you remember that <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, yeah, I do remember that, and I got. Re- I remember getting told that I don't know how to brainstorm. That's true. Yeah. You're not a great brainstormer. Because, but I mean, because I used to keep keep saying, "Oh no, we can't do that." And, yeah. But then I got told, "No, everything, everything is gets an on idea. The board. Everything goes on the board." And we yes. threw a whole bunch of stuff at the wall, and I was like, "No, I don't know about that." And they were yeah. like, "No, it goes on the board." <laughs> and I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Got to take all the ideas, and then we came up with it, right? Yeah, we, easy, we easy. actually came down to two titles. Do you remember what we, the other one was? No. What was it? So we, we got it down to two titles, and we got everybody to write a name on a piece of paper right. to vote for one. Yes. And the EdTech Takeout one. Yes. But what was the other one? The other one was one that I That you liked. wanted? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not necessarily one today. I wouldn't change it now because yeah. I think we have a good, a good name and a good thing going. But the other one was the Digital Learning Download. Oh. Do you remember that? No, I don't. We were the digital learning team. You download yeah, podcasts. Yeah. I thought it kind of made sense. I had this arrow in my head that we could do for the logo. and Yeah. But hey, we're the EdTech Takeout. And yeah. That's where we are. I voted for the EdTech Takeout. I think you did. I did. I won't tell you what I voted for. Oh, you already did. <laughs> <laughs> so come up with a title. Um, yeah, right. I think it's good that your title is in some way indicative of your theme or right. your thing that you're looking for i i kind of feel like a lot of people find our podcast on podcast players and stuff because they search for things like ed tech, ed tech. Mm-hmm. and it just comes up so in some ways i think we have the right one because yeah. um that's the kind of audience and things we're going for i don't maybe people search for digital learning i don't know and if they did yeah. it maybe it's not quite the same thing yeah but, right so yeah think about a good title there's right. all kinds of good podcasts out there mm-hmm. double check maybe that it's not taken by somebody else yeah for sure because that does get confusing fast yeah and you don't want legal issues and stuff like right. that <laughs> get sued <laughs> that would be uh, terrible yeah so then the next thing we did was um came up with a logo and that was kind of a timely thing don't you think like we mm-hmm. we kind of put some blood sweat and tears into that and I, we didn't obviously create it but we do have um eric cleveland here at the agency who we kind of enrolled as our logo creator um, and gave them some ideas of what we wanted to look like. Because you just showed me one the other day, right? And it was like on a takeout box. Yeah, that was one of the ori- the original. I'm uh, like, oh man, I mock-ups. don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was it was an interesting process because you have some ideas in your head and you give them to like a graphic designer, and then right. they come back with something, and you're like. Uh, that's not really where we were trying to go. Yeah, and right. then you try and modify it and they come right. back with something you're like, oh, never thought of that before. Yeah, Maybe right. that would be a, an interesting idea. And we, So we went back and forward on a few different designs and ended up on the, the neon sign that we had mm-hmm. for uh, like a, a fast food mm-hmm. takeout joint, yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah, So yeah. that was so, fun. So um, you have down here the sizes. Yeah, I mean... What, if you, wh- how did you come up with those sizes or what's the... If you want to put it into something, your podcast into iTunes or oh, yeah. something like okay. that... They do have some minimum size requirements. So, I mean, I can link to these. Uh, um, Apple has a has a guide for this kind of thing. But minimum size of 1,400 by 1,400 pixels and maximum size of 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you could, you could, you know, go into Canva or something oh, like yeah. that and easily 
throw yep. those dimensions in and make up your own podcast graphic and send it off. I mean, that'll work just fine. A lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, or if you're a Grant Wood School and you're setting up a podcast and you would like the talents of Mr. Eric Cleveland uh, mm-hmm. on our graphics department. You're looking to, at me like, what? What are you <laughs> going to say right now? And the no, talents of Mindy Carney to yeah, help right. you. <laughs> the talents of our graphic designers, then they can uh, they can help throw that together for you too. Yeah. So this is this next part is kind of more your where your uh, your expertise really come in handy, and that is kind of finding somewhere to host your audio and like how that works with RSS feed and all of that. See, like, I can throw the terms around. Like, I know what I'm talking about, but I just Just leave it there. Just, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is something that you have to do a bit of homework on because um, if you want a podcast that's pub- publicly available for people to download on their smartphones or whatever devices, then you need to host that audio somewhere. You need to upload it to the web somewhere um, so that people can uh, can grab that feed. And it's, I mean, it's kind of like the old days when you subscribe to an, an RSS th- feed in a in a blog or or mm-hmm. something like that, where you know you create an account with one of these podcast hosts, and they will give you uh, like a URL, and you give that URL to Apple, and you give that to Google Play Music, and whoever else you want to give that to, and that means your your podcast can be uh, found by other people. Yeah. But I have seen other people just like. Put their audio files like in their blog, right? Yeah. I mean, you could you if you're could just kind of getting started and not really wanting to spend any money. Mm-hmm. You, could you could just get an audio too. player and stick right. it in a blog, and, and that mm-hmm. way too. But yeah. um, you know, we have ours with uh, Podbean, right? Podbean dot com, and we got recommended them by like Josh Allen mm-hmm. and those guys, Dad's so. and Ed, and I think there was somebody else using it as well. I can't remember who it was, I don't but. Know either. Um, They've worked out really well for us, so um, they have different plans and things. We we do pay for hosting with Podbean, mm-hmm. but uh, that works out well for us. There are other people that use uh, Libsyn, Blueberry, um, SoundCloud. Wes Fryer just moved his wife's uh, podcast to Podiant because she was with... Um, the iPad podcasting app. That, Opinion. Opinion Podcast. Yes, I forgot the name of there. She yeah. was with Opinion and because they stopped doing hosting, yeah, she right. needed somewhere else for it. So Podiant do free accounts. Oh, nice. If you are interested, but they also do paid accounts on there too. Uh-huh. So I guess you just got to pick someone who gives you the uh, the features and the price combination that you want. But uh, yeah, like I said, if you want to put it on iTunes or uh, Google Play Music, then get someone that has an RSS feed that right. you can copy and paste and stick in those directories. Mm -hmm. So kind of after all of that got figured out and you sent me 3,000 emails about those things and I pretended to read them, um, the format then we kind of talked about what, you know, how are we planning on doing this? Are we going to bring on guests? Are we going to try and just do guests? The I think, I is, think this is the fun bit because yeah. you know the you know the the hosting and all that other stuff. I mean that's nuts and bolts. But yeah, when right. you're actually getting into the content, yeah, this right. is why you want to do a podcast because right. you've got ideas that you want to share with people. Yep. But just to think about what that format looks like and how that's going to yeah. play out in in real life. Yeah. And I was telling um, a couple of our teachers that were talking to me about this. You know that we talked about having different sections in the podcast and mm-hmm. things that we always wanted people to walk away with something that they could use tomorrow or use later that day. Um, and then we kind of change it up every once in a while too at the beginning of the show. Sometimes we do news and follow up. We used to do something else. What else did we used to do? We used, we used to do to hot sing. topics. We used to do. We still do hot topic. No, we don't, we don't oh, do no, it we as just often. Do, yeah. 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 Um, so just kind of changing it. And that was more just about keeping it fresh for us, too, I think. But um, You're determined to bring up the singing again, aren't you? I know, yeah. <laughs> I think we should get back to that. People don't even probably remember that. That was like two episodes we did. I don't that, think right? we have a career in singing. <laughs> so either. Um, but I think the other thing to really think about is how to keep it sustainable for you. So, um, And I think that's comes into play when you're talking about when are, releasing, re- how, when are we releasing episodes and... How often and how long are they going to be and how much editing am I going to do? And I mean, all of those things are really important questions to ask yeah. yourself. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you've probably listened to some podcasts before. Yeah. I mean, listen to other podcasts and, and get ideas because mm-hmm. that's what we did as well. I mean, we tried yeah. to make it that they had some kind of structure or some kind of 
format so you you get ideas from other podcasts i mean maybe you'll listen to ours and you'll think hey that's kind of good but i would definitely not do that <laughs> then don't do that yeah right take it exactly. out yep. do your own thing yeah um, but get ideas from other people for sure yeah um and then the other thing we did is brainstormed a bunch of ideas t- just to kind of get us started we don't really go back to that list anymore. I, I was there last week. Were you? Yeah, and we I looked at it. We were trying to figure out and, what we were going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah, and I thought, oh, we did this, we did this, we did yeah. this already. But there's still some ideas on there we oh, haven't touched yet, so yeah. huh. we can come back to that. To go back and look at it, for sure. Yeah. So brainstorm a list of ideas and topics for episodes, and yeah. then you don't have to get to... Monday morning. ...and think, <laughs> what are what we going to do today? today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, so um, moving on then, uh, equipment. You will need some kind of equipment to record a podcast. Mm-hmm. At the bare minimum, you need a microphone. You will um, need some kind of software, right? Um, presumably, if you want to edit it. Although not everybody edits a podcast. Right. I mean, there are some people that do their podcasts on like Google Hangouts, mm-hmm. and they'll just download the audio, pff, upload it to their audio host, mm-hmm. and, and that's it. Yeah. Other people like me like to add a little bit of music on the beginning and the end. Every so often, uh, Mindy and I will be prone to making mistakes, uh. and uh, you've heard some of those already. <laughs> on other days, I will just edit those out, and uh, it will be like we don't make mistakes ever. Like we're perfect podcast hosts. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's really not true because not, yeah. uh, I use an editor software to uh, edit that out. So I mean, microphones are. A ton of them out there. You can just pick one that fits your budget. Um, I can maybe link to a post. There's a guy that went through and did a whole bunch of tests Mm -hmm. on different microphones and what they sound like. And maybe that would be something that would be helpful for people. Um, Mm -hmm. Marco Arment did that. Um, Software. There's software for Macs and PCs um, that will work very well for editing podcasts. Audacity is free audio editor for Mac or PC that you can download if you want to use that. I'm using Adobe Audition because we have access to the Adobe Suite, and I thought, hey, why not? I'm just going to use that. GarageBand could be used um, if you are a supreme professional Mac user. You might want to think about Logic or something like that, but um, I have never dipped into that yet. So just, I don't know, try that stuff out and practice using the equipment. I think Mindy and I had some practice sessions for our podcast before we even like podcasted Mm -hmm. we would like practice and see how this works and uh, make sure the mic's gonna work and what does this audio sound like and and so forth so like on average how long does it take you to edit the podcast i don't think you probably take as much time as you used to right correct yeah we so switched up the workflow a little bit recently and it really depends on how many mistakes we make. Well, I know, but that's what I'm saying, like, on average. On average, if it's like a, I don't know, a 50-minute podcast, yeah. it might take an hour and a half, yeah. maybe. So not too bad, really. Right. I mean, just how much messing around I want to do with it. Yeah, and, sure. And tweaking. So. so that's definitely the question, then, is to edit or not to edit. And I had um, this conversation, too. And I, I would think that... You do less editing now, not necessarily because we make less mistakes, but because we're just kind of like, well, this is who we are. Correct. <laughs> and we just got to let it go and let our personality shine through. And I think that's important, right? Like, Yes. When we first started, I used to edit out things like ums and as and well and pauses and stuff like that. But yeah. it didn't seem very natural after right. a while. Right. And I guess people don't know any different if they don't know us. Yeah. But we have... <laughs> evolved a little bit more and sure. uh, i just try and keep it a bit more natural yeah for the most part yeah i would agree but uh yeah it depends how much time you have how much editing you want to do if you want to yeah. throw in a whole bunch of different music and Crazy. audio and yeah, sound right. effects and right. go for it yeah mm-hmm. so um kind of staying with that same theme when we first started we record differently now than we used to we used to record in separate rooms <laughs> We did. We did. And we used, we did web conferencing calls, just audio, no video, because we didn't think that we could be in the same room with one another without like cracking up. Cracking up. Yeah. Which actually we were better now than we used to be, right? I think so. So we used to use Zoom to do that. And then we would record locally to our computer. So I used QuickTime. And what did you record into? It wasn't QuickTime. Uh, what did you use? I might have used Adobe or or QuickTime, one or the other. Yeah, right. Yeah. But. Um, and then, but that was kind of interesting because yeah. we, we would connect yeah. over this video conference call right. with each other, but Mindy wouldn't even turn her video on because you didn't turn your video on either. 
That's baloney. What we, are you talking about? I feel like we we thought we couldn't even look at each other. We couldn't. Because we would make each other around. laugh and goof up and yeah. stuff like that. Right. So, yeah, we just had audio only on that. Prefer to roll my eyes in private. Be, yeah, but <laughs> but that is actually a way that you could record if you yeah. were in different locations. Absolutely. So if you were like, you had a teacher at another school that you wanted to record with, yeah. mm-hmm. then you connect over Skype or Zoom right. or, or whatever it is. But you record your audio on your computer, they record their audio on their computer, Mm -hmm. and then you take those two audio files and mash them together in one of those um, audio editors. Well, and the reason that we recorded locally, too, is because sometimes our Wi-Fi connections, like in rooms with closed doors, aren't as, I don't know, reliable as which is the case everywhere. In everyone's school, everyone's homes, things like that. So. That's why we recorded it locally. So sometimes Wiley would like just like go away, and I knew he was still talking, and I would just not say anything on my end because which I just le- wait for the Zoom call to reconnect or whatever. Which led to more editing because it yeah. would be like, "Hello, are you still there? <laughs> Hello, like, are you there? Yeah, I've been Can talking this whole time. Did you not hear me? Like, I was like, no. Oh, okay. So what'd you say? Well, it would be a good lead in here. So, uh, this so works then I, I groan and I have to go back to the audio editor and take all that it's stuff out and we record crabby. things. So mm. hey, I managed to persuade Mindy to get in the same room and. Well, now we have better equipment though too. Some of it was e- that we couldn't. Our recording was kind of wonky. Yeah, or it didn't lend itself very well to recording in the same room. Right. So we have equipment that is better for that now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um. Another way you could do those different location ones is there's a service we I think we tried it once or twice called mm-hmm. Zencaster. Do you did. remember that? Yeah. And what it does is it basically connects you to somebody else in a remote location, kind of like a video conference call, um, but then it does all the audio recording for you and it puts it together in a file for you. Mm-hmm. So maybe look at that. They do have a free plan. Um, it's Zencaster Z E N. C A S T R dot com, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll put a link to those in the show notes, and you can check those guys out. Yeah, but once you get it done, you yeah. want to share it with other people, right? So um, this is a kind of a misconception I had when I talked to some people about podcasting. If they've never done a podcast or didn't know much about podcasts, and they thought that you take your podcast and you upload it to iTunes, right? And that's, and not, that's, the case. And that's not how it works because. Right. Um, iTunes is just like a big directory, like a big catalog of podcasts that you can search through and find podcasts, but they don't actually live up there. So um, there is a website where you can go and submit your RSS feed to iTunes, and then it will list it on the podcast directory that Apple has. There's like an approval period in there, though, right? Like There is an approval period. Yeah. Apple will um, will check that out and, and see your episodes are what you, they say you are, and because uh, you have to mark them as containing explicit language or not Mm -hmm. explicit language and you have to choose the category that you want to put it in and and all this kind of good stuff Mm -hmm. and then Apple check that out and usually within a day day or two they will um, approve that and there is one for Google Play Music as well which Mm -hmm. helps reach some of those Android users I know a lot of people that listen to podcasts tend to listen to them on Apple devices but I think there's more and more people listening to it on uh, on Android now and Google Play Music is a good place to put stuff like that um, you can put it other places, uh, send your podcast to other places like Stitcher and um, other iHeartRadio and stuff like that. There are some other places you can send them to, but they reserve the right to put ads on your podcast. Oh, So really? they can play ads before your podcast or oh, after your podcast or during your podcast. And so that's one of the reasons why I didn't put hours there. So yeah. if you've ever looked for hours in Stitcher and other places like that, it's because I didn't want ads to run before it and you know we want to be the main attraction folks well yeah that and i don't know what ads are going to be associated with grant wood aea and stuff like that so good call yeah yeah so we're in itunes we're in google play music and um you can find us there or people can just search for your podcast in podcast apps because uh your podcast app will draw from itunes or Mm -hmm. google play music and those directories on there too but we also just on our website Yes. Haven't it? So we take the um, where it's hosted at Podbean and take the embed code and then put it into our website too. So a couple different places. It's also on YouTube. It's also on YouTube. Because Podbean will let you, if you connect your YouTube channel, it will automatically send it to YouTube for you. D- Does anybody listen to us on YouTube? I have no idea. No, we neither. I should go back and you check should, the views. I, I'm just but curious about Yeah. what's the image. Is it just an image of me? Uh, no, I think, it it just, I think it's our logo or yeah. something, yeah. And it just plays the audio through a video. Can, can we add a GIF to it of me? 
Um, I don't know if anybody really wants to see that. Yep. (laughs) So after that, um, you kind of have to promote yourself, which I think is tricky because Uh nobody ever wants to like come across as self promotional. But when you first, some people do. We are not those people. Um, But that's the hard thing I think is about like kind of begging people to listen to it, right? So when we first got started, we. I would say encouraging link. people to listen to we it. We begged. Okay, we begged. I mean, I sent an email to my parents or a link <laughs> to my parents. Like, you don't have to listen to this, but just rate it and leave a comment and say how great it is. Because um, that thing, I mean, when you first get started, reviews are important for yeah. any business, for anything you do. Yeah. It's important to get reviews. So Even if you just go to the, pod, the iTunes store or the right. Apple podcast app, you're looking for a podcast. If it has no reviews, you're like... Oh, I don't even know if people like this yeah, or, not, right. or not, but just some reviews is better than no reviews. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So kind of asking people and inviting them to listen to it personally and asking them to write a review um, was kind of how we got started. And then um, we did, I don't do this anymore, but I used to buffer out our episodes. So if you haven't used Buffer, it allows you to schedule your tweets and other social media posts, yeah. Facebook too. I don't know about Instagram. I have no it idea. It does do Instagram, but Is it that- doesn't direct post. I think it like gives you a reminder or something oh, to post. I see. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the thing about Twitter is, like, it's great, and there's lots of people connected, but, like, you can easily miss a tweet. I mean, oh, yeah. tweets are going a million miles a minute. So sure. um, scheduling uh, some of those tweets to repeat occasionally on Buffer, so you kind of hit the morning crowd and the afternoon crowd and the evening crowd is always kind of what I think. Throwing some hashtags. Throwing some hashtags, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's a good way. And then uh, I think, too, just like asking your social media friends or to share it or to tag them. We get lots of people that tag us, like, with blog posts and stuff like that, and we're Mm -hmm. happy to... You know, retweet those things, and but no, we're I mean, we're happy to to do that too, and um, you know, people did that for us when we first got started, so that's kind of a nice way to kind of get it out there and get people listening. So, anything else you want to add to that? Not really. Yeah. I think you did a good job on that. You did a good job promoting our podcast yeah, and uh, on Snapchat as well. Yeah, <gasps> I didn't. I was gonna snap today. But I'm gonna have to do a pretend one. Okay. After this, after the podcast is over. This is us recording live. This is us recording live. Yeah. <laughs> Just joking. Um, no. Oh, and making sure that people can connect with you, right? So we get lots of, we don't get lots, but we do have people, you know, tweet us and stuff and just being willing to interact with those people. Um, email or, too. We, email. Yeah. We had an email the other day from uh, a lady that wanted to use our um, oh, that's right. Getting that Jiggy so, with Gmail title that, yeah. for our professional development <laughs> workshop. Love that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, always yeah. happy to uh, indulge and, and connect with people that way. Absolutely. That was uh, Beth Cragen from Harvard Public Schools. So, yeah. Always good to hear from her. She says she listens to our podcast all the time oh, and even so goes nice. back and listens to old episodes too. Like, um, like to listen to them again? Yeah. When she's oh. got like uh, trainings coming up or something oh, to get nice. new ideas, she'll yeah, go back and listen sure. to old that's, ones. And sure, thanks. Yeah, that's nice. Even we don't listen to our old <laughs> I episodes. So. I don't listen to it at all. <laughs> Occasionally, I do if I'm worried about how you edited something. I might go in and listen yeah. to something. Okay, yes, but for the most part. So that's about it. I yeah. mean, that's the long and short of how we how we podcast and what our structure was and what we did. I mean, if you have questions or things you think we could help you with over and beyond that mm-hmm. absolutely um let us know hit us up on twitter or email us podcast at gwa.org and we will be happy to uh, help you out in any way we can yeah. retweet your show whatever sure. it takes and help you get started in the podcasting world because I, I feel like we're part of a community here yeah. of podcasters and for sure um it's all good that we help each other out yeah All right, that moves us on to Tech Nuggets. Some extra, put some extra ketchup on that today. Some extra ketchup. <laughs> A little extra ketchup. Saucy. Saucy. All right, so I guess my uh, Tech Nuggets on first on the list here, and it's Insert Learning. I was really worried we talked about this before. Does this sound familiar to you? This is not so okay. familiar to me, but <laughs> listeners, please tweet at Mindy <laughs> if you've heard this one before. Have we heard? Have we talked about this one before? So... Um, insert, lear- insert, insert learning, if I can say it. This is another hat tip to Jennifer Gonzalez. I got a couple from her. I had one last time, too. Um, so it's a way for you to insert, like, questions, 
um, discussions into the content of any web page. So if you're familiar with like Ed Puzzle is kind of how I think of it, or yeah. even like kind of actively learnish, where you can um, just find a web page that you want your students to read and um, engage in. You can add questions and discussions. You can highlight. Um, just some different things to take a look at. So it's all free from what I, from what I can understand. Wow. I, I don't... This is good. I'm looking at it now. I yeah. mean, you can, you can add YouTube videos. Yeah. You can put this, a discussion prompt in there. You can add sticky notes. You can assign it to a class and it yes. integrates with Google, Google Classroom. Google Classroom. Whoa. I know. This is pretty powerful stuff mindy i know enhance publish google docs with videos and interactive content turn digital worksheets into oh i'm gonna digital worksheets into a richer learning experience yeah well yeah. anything that makes digital worksheets richer <laughs> yeah, is better is for better sure. yeah yeah so i don't know um i haven't i mean i've just looked at the demo you can kind of demo it on their page and kind of see how it works so it allows you to add your own questions in and kind of take a look and see if it's something that you might use. Like I said, I haven't used it, but I've looked at it and I thought it was really cool. So I like it. Yeah. Okay. So my tech nugget is a shout out to TCEA, mm -hmm. which is uh, an ISTE affiliate, kind of similar to what iTech is in Iowa, except they are the Texas equivalent. And uh, they have a resource that I turn to every now and again because I get questions from teachers and other colleagues and things. And I got one recently by email that said, hey, I've got this teacher who's uh, looking for phonics apps for the iPad. And I'm like, ooh, yeah. yeah. Hmm, mm, well, well uh, <laughs> okie dokie. <laughs> uh, it's been a little while since I've done phonics apps. So uh, yeah. uh, where do I look for this stuff? And so I went to their website. And they have a list of what's called free must-have iPad apps. And they have free must-have iPad apps for content creation, free must-have apps for health and PE, free must-have app, app for phonics. So, yeah, all kinds of interesting lists and ideas. And I'm not going to say every one of these apps are going to be gold for you necessarily. But if you click on here, you definitely get some ideas and places on where to start. They have um, hyperlinked um a hyperlinked uh, PDF here that will link to the app in the App Store and give you a short description about it. And all the apps are free, so I mean you can't say it's a good place to start. worse than that. So if you're yeah, looking for places to have ideas for apps for your iPads, then this could be a good place to start. Hmm. I never looked at that before. Now I will. T C E A iOS -E -A. resources. Yeah. I'll put a link to those on there. Okay. Next one is one from um, Frank Slaybaugh. Oh. Had a lunch with Frank last uh, Friday. I have not seen Frank for a long time. He's doing well. Um, Good. And I don't know how we got... Oh, I did um, an emoji session at the um, conference on Friday. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was asking me about how it went, and he said, oh, have you ever used And Then I Was Like... Like, I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> it sounds like a new NBC show or something, doesn't <laughs> right. it? <laughs> and I said, no, I've never heard of this. So um, it's and then I was like dot co, and what it's a gift maker, but you use your own pictures, which you can do with any gift maker, yes. Although what it does is it takes the pictures within the website for you in that quick flash. So, um, so it uses it your just, webcam. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> it uses the webcam. What did I say? It uses what? your pictures. Oh, yes. It uh, uses your so, webcam. Thank yeah. you. Jeez, oh, fumbling this up. So it takes all um, the pictures from your webcam so you don't have to upload anything. And then it just instantly pushes. Help me out. I am struggling. You want to start this one again? We <laughs> no. have the power of editing on this podcast. <laughs> No, so it stitches them all together was the word I was looking for. So it yeah. stitches them all together and makes a GIF. Now, what I really want to see happen with this is that I wanted to be able to download it. And I can't download it, but I can put it on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, it gives me an embed code and it gives me a link. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to keep talking about this just for a second. because So then, immediately after that, I saw Tony Vincent had posted an app called Sticky AI. And so what that does... 
um, is peels the background away from your image and also creates a GIF that you can then save into your camera roll. You can add text to it. And I used it and it was awesome. Good. Yes. Tony Vincent has awesome stuff. I know. We should have him back on the podcast. No, I feel like we need like I love Tony t shirts. Yeah. We Tony, should. do you have those? <laughs> Tony probably has those. He probably yeah. does yeah. with like a cute little picture of himself, avatar on it. Huh. Right. I'm, well, I'm looking at it and then I was like, and I'm yeah. wondering if you can like just like right click on the image and like save the image that way. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll check and see. That can be news and update for next time. <laughs> yeah, that would be news and follow up for sure. <laughs> um, so my last um, tech nugget here is kind of an old one, but a good one. I learned about this one a long time ago from um, Sylvia Duckworth. It's called Prompt Smart, and it's available in a light or a pro version of the app. And it's a teleprompter app. Mm-hmm. And it's a teleprompter app that does something that I don't think any other teleprompter app does. Because uh, what it will do is after you put your script in there, and you can import your script from Google Drive and Dropbox and different places, um, it will play the script at the pace that you talk. So normally on these teleprompter apps, it will just like scroll up and down. And if it's too fast, then you have to read quickly. Mm -hmm. And if it's too slow, then you have to read slowly. But what Prompt Smart does is it moves at the pace that you talk. It recognizes your words. And if you pause, it will pause. And if you go faster, it will go faster. So I think this is a great one for things like green screen or any kind of video work you're doing. Um, You can instantly turn an iPad into a teleprompter and a smart teleprompter. Um, for not a whole lot of money. The light mm-hmm. version is free. You can try it out. The pro version is $10, I believe, which is kind of expensive, but it's probably not the type of app that you need on, like, 30 iPads. Right. You probably just need, like, one or two one, to yeah, have sure. one for a film production. But uh, Prompt Smart is in the App Store for iOS. Good one. We might need it for this podcast after today. I think yeah. we might. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Well, I have a lot of editing to do today. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so before we go then, a uh, quick shout out because we talked about people sharing and uh, spreading the love for podcasts. And I wanted to give a shout out to Joe Dale, Mr. Middle, who is uh, a.k.a. Louie, apparently. Bonnie Kramer, Don Yerkes, Stella Pollard, because all those nice people have um, mentioned us on Twitter to other people. Um, and we are very grateful for you guys for doing that. I am Team Carney on Twitter, and Jonathan is at Jonathan Wiley. Our team account is at DLGWAEA, and you can use our new hashtag, hashtag EdTechTakeout, to take the show. If you prefer, you can send us an email to podcast at GWAEA.org. So that's all we have time for. I'm going to fire up my audio editor. (laughs) This has been the EdTech Takeout. We hope it hit the spot. For more information on today's episode, please visit dlgwaea.org slash podcast. 